Hello there, this is Miriam, chronic pain coach and mind body practitioner at Pain Outside the Box. And today I'm going to be discussing the topic of how to feel your feelings. So as some of you know, healing from mind body pain and symptoms requires a certain amount of emotional work, right? It requires you to be more vulnerable, more aware of those emotions that might have triggered your symptoms in the first place. If you know anything about this, you'd know that symptoms are like an alert system from the body telling you to maybe stop what you're doing. Maybe you've gone on and on, you've been busy, you've been through conflict, distress, and you haven't given yourself a break. Or maybe you've had a really distressing event and it's affected you and you haven't been able to really process how that's affected you. No matter what it is, feelings and emotions are always at the bottom of mind-body symptoms. Whether they are emotions that have to do with fear, frustrations and depression towards the symptoms themselves or other even deeper emotions having to do with your past or with something that happened recently. And uh, many people ask me, but you know, maybe I, I can't really feel my feelings. I've tried to, but I, I feel nothing. I just feel the pain. I just have symptoms. So how do I work with this? So first of all, the, the first thing I want you to be aware of is that a lot of us haven't been attuned to our feelings, right? So a lot of us have emotions, but we don't even realize that we're having them. For example, if let's say you're trying to feel your emotions, but you, you feel empty, you can't really feel anything. Well, that is still a feeling that feeling of emptiness or that sensation of nothingness. It's still a feeling and feelings and emotions are actually felt as sensation in the body. If we really, really tune into them. So the sensations, which are actually physical, and they're usually felt in the throat and chest and heart area there. It's like the sensations are the translator between our deeper emotions and they're trying to translate those emotions to us physically. So one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the time emotions are not abstract things. They're not simply like mental concepts, but they're actually felt in the body. Let's say, for example, an obvious example would be if you recall a time when you cried a lot, where you sobbed really hard, you were probably feeling intense sensations in your chest at the time, right? Maybe that is pretty obvious. Or even when it comes to good feelings, you might have felt excitement at some time in your life and you felt those like butterflies in, in your stomach. So those are also sensations. So. I believe that the best way to feel your feelings is to sit down with any sensations that arise. And even if you feel like there is no sensation, I would like you to just take a moment and tune in to this area here, mostly from the underneath the chin, the throat, the heart area, the chest in particular, and, and the belly. And just really, really notice what's going on there. All you have to do is to be with the sensations. And if there feels like there's a void, that's okay. If you are frustrated at not being able to feel anything, well, guess what? Frustration is also a feeling. So stay with that frustration. It can be difficult to spend a certain amount of time with uncomfortable feelings, but really and truly, this is what us as human beings really need to learn to do. It's not about making ourselves sad or making ourselves face negative emotions all the time, but we have grown to be so good at avoiding feelings and at distracting ourselves from feelings. I mean, you only have to think how many times you resort to maybe scrolling your phone, um, maybe to binge watch, watching videos or movies, just so you can escape from a difficult day. How often do you look forward to having a drink or a cigarette in the evening, just because you want to escape from a difficult day? That is a habit that is a sort of emotional bypassing 
And if you are having chronic symptoms physically in the body, those symptoms are telling you something. The body still is storing those strong emotions. It's just that you're escaping from them every day. So whether you like the idea or not, most of us, if we really, really want to heal, we have to find some time to really, really sit with our feelings and acknowledge them with as much openness and vulnerability as we can. It also helps sometimes to just write them down, write down what you're feeling expressively. In fact, I have a separate video as well about uh, expressive writing, which I'm going to link to. So ideally, it's a mix of both. It's a mix of expressive writing, writing what you're feeling about anything that comes to mind, unloading those emotions onto paper and then forgetting about it. That's the expressive writing part. But the other technique I want to introduce you to today is to just take a moment to sit or lie down still with your uncomfortable emotions. Or if emotions doesn't yet sound like the right word for you, with those sensations over in the chest and throat and belly area and really, really tune into what's going on. If you're still finding it difficult to really feel those feelings, then maybe wait until you're actually triggered. So let's say wait until you you have a, a flare. I don't I don't really wish you that, but let's say you you have a flare and you're triggered by that flare. You're starting to feel upset and frustrated. That's a feeling, and I want you to really really stay with it the next time you feel it. Or let's say someone makes a comment that triggers you and you're starting to feel this, um, this rage or a little bit triggered or a little bit confused, whatever it is, the next time you're triggered, try to find a moment to either stay with that feeling in the moment, or if you cannot do it in the moment, to recall it for a little while later on that day and to stay with it and see what comes up. Let it unfold completely instead of trying to downplay it, uh, trying to logically get your way out of it in some way, trying to rationalize it. It's not about rationalizing. It's about staying with it and seeing what else comes up. Maybe nothing comes up, no solution, no insight, but still staying with that feeling, it will eventually create a process of separation between you, yourself, and this feeling that's emerging, right? Because you are now being the observer of this emotion, of this feeling. So try this either next time that you're triggered or today, later on today, after this video, just sit down for 10 to 15 minutes and really feel what's going on. If there is a little bit of irritation, really sit with that irritation, let it get stronger. If there is fear, anger, whatever it is, don't try to invalidate your feelings or don't try to tell yourself that you should be feeling otherwise. This is also very important. It's not about wanting or having to feel otherwise right now. When we want to change an emotion instantly, we actually end up being at war with ourselves. So the first thing is to really feel those feelings, is to teach yourself to feel those feelings. And as you get better with it, it will act more or less like a compass for you. As you go about your life and you get triggered, you will more easily notice that trigger and be able to feel and then separate from it so that you can actually respond better to any challenging situations. That is the beauty of it. And who knows, you might even one day stumble upon an emotion that is deeper than you actually thought. And it might be intense, but it might actually give you a huge clue as to why you've been having symptoms and also some ideas as to what you can do to change this. Maybe it will be a clue about having to speak to someone, having to change something. Maybe you've had an argument a year ago that still sits really, really heavily in your heart, but you've tried to pretend that you've forgiven the person or that it's over. You didn't want to revisit it. It's okay if something is still lingering there, if you're still being triggered, 
by a similar situation to what happened in the past, that means that that emotion is still there and you need to be processing it more fully. So stay more with your emotions and be really patient with yourself. Don't be telling yourself that you should be feeling in a certain way, that you should be feeling extremely intense feelings or, or emotions. It's not about that. It starts with being with whatever there is and seeing how things unfold. And after that, of course, don't forget to also live your life as much as possible, pursuing activities that give you relaxation and some peace and joy. Maybe after going through a session like this, um, after feeling your feelings deeply, it will be also good to reward yourself for your work by then a positive distraction that is okay. Go for a walk and be present with the moment as much as possible. Be present with whatever is left after you have fully allowed those emotions to unfold. That's all from me for today and I wish you all a lovely week ahead. Bye bye.